The day is finally here. I am able to take my first look at the all new Ford F-150 Lightning. This is not the first electric pickup truck on sale in the United States. Most likely that's going to be the Rivian, which should be on sale sometime in September. This is going to be the second, but this is the one that I find the most interesting because this is a half ton pickup truck. This is an F-150 that they've converted to electrification. And although that sounds like the F-150 might be compromised as it's a conversion, that's probably not the best way to think of this F-150 because even though this looks like an F-150 on the outside and really on the inside of the cabin, it doesn't share that much architecturally with the F-150 under the skin. And that makes a lot of sense because this was definitely redesigned for electrification. This is the base model and you can tell that because we don't have the light strip running right here across the front. This is the one that I find most interesting because this is going to be available for under $40,000 according to Ford. You'll notice we have pretty small wheels right here. This is definitely targeted at a work truck audience. So someone that's interested in a little bit more tire there for a little bit better protection. An interesting touch is that we have F-150 Pro logos on either side, even though there's only a charging port on the other side. If you get the other trims of F-150 Lightning, then we get the full width LED bar right there and a different texture on what used to be the front grille of the F-150, but now is of course just the lid for the frunk. The Lightning comes only in one form, just as you see it right here with the crew cab, four doors, and a five and a half foot bed in the back. That's because this is the most popular form of the F-150 currently in the United States. So in order to simplify things, they chose to make just one electric truck. But based on the design, there's no particular reason that Ford couldn't give us other variations of the F-150 in the future if there was popular demand for that. A five and a half foot bed is not as useful for some folks as a six and a half or an eight foot bed, but even in construction, this should be just fine because you can always lower the tailgate, put eight foot sheet goods in here, have them hang out the back. It's not too much of a problem. According to Ford, you can put up to 2000 pounds of payload in your F-150 Lightning, and you could tow up to 10,000 pounds when properly equipped. Now, this is a very early pre-production model, so obviously not everything is quite right, but we do have a lot of the features that we still find in the regular F-150 like places where you can clamp things down in the truck bed. You'd also be able to get the step, it appears, that's going to be integrated into that tailgate as well. This is again the base model, so keep that one in mind. There are obviously going to be things that you'll find on this model that you won't find on the upper end trims and things that you'll find on the upper end trims that are missing on this one. One of the important things to know is that if you want the extended range battery pack, that's going to be a lot more expensive than the near $40,000 price point of this model. This is going to start again around $40,000. If you're a commercial customer, a Ford commercial customer, you can buy this model with the bigger battery pack for an extra $10,000. But if you're not a commercial customer, you have to step up into the XLT trim, then option up into the bigger battery pack. And that's going to be quite a bit more expensive. Fortunately, Ford brought along one of their cutaways, which I love because you can really see the advantages of an electrified architecture like this. An electric motor takes up an awful lot less room than especially the five liter V8 that's available in the regular F-150. And that's why we have that front trunk available right there. You can get either 426 horsepower or 563 horsepower, depending on which one you get. The difference is in the battery pack. The electric motor is right up there up front. You can see the redesigned motor cradle right there. And then we have the multi-layer lithium ion battery pack that spans pretty much the entire cab in the vehicle. Body on frame vehicles generally have a lot of wasted space. So the battery pack is a perfect fit for this area of the vehicle. No drive shaft, no gas tank, nothing like that going on back here. The battery pack is double stacked right back here towards the rear. The bed of the vehicle starts generally in this area. You can see the rear electric motor there, the new independent rear suspension. This is not related to the independent rear suspension that we find in Ford's SUVs, however. You'll notice the big difference in that the drive shaft does not go through the frame members. And then we have a spare tire right back there at the rear. The one detail that Ford has yet to provide is exactly how big is the battery pack in the F-150 Lightning. Instead, they've decided to just go on range figures. So 230 miles of range is standard, 300 miles of range is optional. Obviously, that's not when you're towing or hauling anything in the F-150 Lightning. The battery pack is logically the likely reason that we get different power output figures. The more battery cells you have, the more power you can dissipate, the more powerful your electric vehicle can be. And that's why when we take a look at some of the really powerful EVs out there, they always have pretty big batteries. Logically, the advantage to not having an engine up front is that this area can be used for something else. Also, another advantage for basing this vehicle off of a regular F-150 because the body is basically the same, as is the hood with some modifications right here because the grille opens with the hood and that gives you over 14 cubic feet of storage space. This is a bigger cargo area than we find in most mid-sized sedans in America and you can put up to 400 pounds of cargo in here. There's a little cargo divider so that we can help keep things from falling out and there's some electrical outlets right there on the side. With the two battery pack options, Ford is giving us two options for charging. There's going to be a standard 11 kilowatt onboard charger. You'll find that in the smaller battery pack. 
If you get the bigger battery pack, then we get dual onboard chargers that bump things up to just over 19 kilowatts. This is gonna be one of the fastest AC charging EVs available in the United States. It all happens right here behind this door via the J1772 connector. This also supports the CCS DC fast charge standard and charge rates up to 150 kilowatts. Now we don't know again the battery size on the big battery Ford F-150 Lightning, but most estimates put this somewhere around 155 to 160 kilowatts usable. The battery pack itself is likely about 177 kilowatts. So this is nearly double the battery capacity that we find in the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now 19.2 kilowatts is a ton of power and that's why this has dual onboard chargers. That's also why you're gonna need a new EVSC. If you currently have pretty much any electric vehicle out there and you wanna charge a new F-150 Lightning at the full rate, you're going to need an 80 amp EVSC. And honestly, you should buy the Ford 80 amp EVSC because none of the other ones out there are gonna support the new feature that's available in this, which is vehicle to load you'll be able to pull 9.6 kilowatts back out of the battery through the onboard inverters to power your home in the event of a power outage. That's a serious amount of power. I have a 7,000 watt diesel generator and it is quite heavy. It's able to power my home. So this is going to be more than enough power for those situations. Obviously also it has an industrial or a commercial application as well. If you're on a job site and you wanna power things like cement mixers, for some reason an electric barbecue, I'm not quite clear why you would wanna do that, but definitely saws, TVs, all that sort of stuff. This can all be powered via the onboard power system. Now that's accessed not via the 80 amp charger, that's accessed via the ports right back here in the rear. 240 volt outlets or 110 volt outlets. You can get up to 2.4 kilowatts out of the outlets in the front and you can get the entire balance right back here via the outlets in the rear. Now, if you wanna back up your home, again, you're gonna need the Ford charging station and it's gonna to have to be properly wired in by an electrician. It's possible that there will be other compatible EVSEs at some point in the future, but again, if you wanna do that right from the very beginning, you're gonna need the Ford Home EVSC. That's gonna be the one that's gonna supply 80 amps to the fastest chargers available in the Lightning to give you the fastest charge times. You can go from about 10% to full in about eight hours, apparently. This is a really, really big battery pack again and it's gonna be able to automatically transfer power to the house. That's the other interesting twist is it's not going to be manual unless you want it to. You can manually switch the vehicle over to power your home or you can have it happen automatically and the vehicle is intelligent enough to reserve power for your trip to work. So if you're worried about having a full battery, powering your home and then not having enough power to get to work the next day, don't worry, Ford has already thought of that. You can limit the amount of power that your home consumes total from the vehicle, giving you a little bit of a safety buffer. Now, full disclosure, I was so intrigued when I first heard about the F-150 Lightning from Ford that I actually pre-ordered one, and my intention is to buy the absolute base trim, which is what we're taking a look at first in this video. Now, keep in mind, this is targeted at commercial customers, so we find things like a urethane steering wheel, vinyl seats, not leather, not fabric, anything like that, manual seats as well. And we have a smaller LCD infotainment system, although smaller is relative because at around 12 inches, this screen is quite large for a modern truck. The rest of the F-150 Lightning lineup has a 15 inch screen that's basically been borrowed out of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. We have basically the same sort of dashboard components that we find in the rest of the F-150 lineup. This interior is essentially lifted out of the rest of that F-150 lineup. But again, we get that big screen standard and we get a large 12 inch instrument cluster right there, which is standard. That's kind of surprising for a base model that is focused on commercial customers. We get a console mounted shifter right there. And like the rest of the F-150s, this has the option of a power retractable shifter so that way you can use this area as a work surface. In the back, we find basically the same rear bench seat that we find in the regular F-150, again, vinyl seats, dual air vents right back there in the rear, an AC power outlet, 12 volt power outlet, USB charge port. We find vinyl flooring rather than carpeting in this model. And if we lift that rear seat up, like you can see right there, you'll notice that the floor is completely flat in here. And that's because the battery is completely inside the frame members. Ford also brought along the model with the big 15 inch infotainment screen in the dash. This is basically the same screen that we find in the Ford Mustang Mach-E with the same physical knob right around here for the volume. The rest of the software looks very much like the Mustang Mach-E with some Ford specific parts. And then we have new software here for things like the Pro Power onboard system. You can see what the front circuit's doing, the back circuit's doing. Those two circuits combined would give you the total maximum power output of the onboard inverter. And then over here on the dashboard, you can see a little bit more information than I showed you before. For instance, the power charge gauge right there, battery level information right there in the middle. This is the leather wrapped steering wheel that's gonna be available in the upper end trims. And you can see that the rest of the dashboard changes a little bit because of that larger display. But Ford has done a really good job integrating this into the vehicle, I think. And hopefully this makes its way into the rest of the F-150 lineup. The big difference is that it sticks up a little bit higher than the rest of the dashboard right there. 
The upper end trims are gonna get the fold out workspace right there in the center console. And that's one of the reasons that we have that fold into the console shifter design so that we can then unfold that and use that as a work surface. This one also has the available power seat. And quite logically, since this isn't the base model, we get carpet for the floor. Now, rather unfortunately, Ford wouldn't let us drive the F-150 Lightning, but they would drive us around the small autocross course. According to Ford, the big battery model should go zero to 60 somewhere around four and a half seconds. Keep in mind, this is probably going to be the heaviest version of the F-150, but in an odd sense, when unladen, it's probably also going to be the best balanced F-150 because of all that added weight of the battery pack in the rear. And that's why this doesn't look too extraordinary out here on this autocross course. It definitely does fairly well. There's a little bit less body roll, a little bit less lean than you'd expect in a heavy pickup truck because of the center of gravity. It's really low thanks to that battery pack. Now, all models of the F-150 Lightning are going to be four-wheel drive. That's that dual motor setup. And remember, all F-150 Lightnings are also going to have a fully independent rear suspension. And there you have it. That's my brief look at the all-new Ford F-150 Lightning. Hopefully, we will know more towards the end of this year. And again, I do have one on order for our next long-term vehicle here at Alex and Autos. This is theoretically going to replace the Mustang Mach-E that we've had for a few months. And like the Mustang Mach-E, this is also going to be offering Ford's Level 2 Plus hands-free driving assistance. So if you're looking for a pickup truck that can cruise down the road without your hands on the steering wheel, Ford is promising that this is going to be one of the first. The new Silverado for 2022 is also going to be offering a very similar feature. Let me know what you think about all that down there in the comment section below. And what would you get if you were shopping for a new EV pickup truck? Would you be looking at something half ton sized like this F-150? Or would you be looking at something mid-sized like the new Rivian? The Rivian is awfully, awfully interesting. Is it a direct competitor to the F-150 or not? That I am not quite sure yet. It really has a lot of cool, innovative features on the inside. It's a bit more Tesla, I would say, than this F-150 Lightning, but it's also probably targeting a different customer because it is smaller on the outside than this. It's certainly not as wide as the F-150. Let me know what you think about all that. Find me over at facebook.com slash alexanatos, Instagram, all those other social places. And of course, check out the merch store, awaymerch.com. I'll see all of you later. It's a wrap. <laughs>